There's 55,000 storage facilities across the United States of America. If each one of those facilities only had three auctions a month, that's 1.7 million rooms going up every year. That's a lot of money to be made, and I'm the guy that does that. fights, I'm the best thing in the world. To the veterans, I'm the devil. <laughs> it changes your buying habits. You don't have to buy clothes anymore. You get brand new clothes out of storage units. You get a lot of watches. Everything I'm wearing, I've got out of a storage unit. I've gotten cars. Anything you can think of. Since the land is such a transient place, we have 10,000 people a month moving here and 4,000 people moving out. So we've got a positive growth rate of 6,000 people a month. There's a lot of churn, so to speak, in terms of the homes and the apartments. And that makes the storage business really booming. It's such a vibrant city, and there's a lot of people coming and going. Mid-level storage facility may have some great stuff, may not. The most exciting thing about it is you never know what's in there, and that's also can be the most disappointing thing about it. All right, you have 24 hours to get everything outside of the unit. Do not go inside, touch, remove anything from the unit until after you have purchased it and have a receipt in hand. Empty units. That's the weirdest. You open them up and there's nothing in them. 100 in a moment ago, 1 1 you would go, 1 in a moment ago, 100. 100 in a moment ago, 1 1 you would go, 50, 50 in a moment ago, 50. If you don't have nerves of steel, it's just not going to work out for you in this business. You won't last long. 50, 50 anywhere, everybody's seen it all done. 50 last call. So, 45. The biggest thing is having an eye. You can just look at something and you know it's valuable. You just don't know how valuable. It was absolute junk. $25, I have two hundred go three. Three hundred now four. I have three hundred go four. You go four. Three give me four. You go four. Three give me four. Now five. We'll go five. We'll give me five. We'll go five. We'll give me five. Five. All they're doing is just pissing in the wind because if I wanted, I'm gonna get it. Six hundred. Six and a half. Now seven. Seven. Now seven and a half. Seven. Seven. One of the best things about getting a unit is you get this little thrill. It's almost like a runner's high or a gambler's high. You just can't wait to slap your lock on it because you don't really want anyone else to get a look at what you've got. Nine and a half, nine and a half anywhere, all done. So nine and a quarter number. Okay. When I got the unit, I was pretty happy because I, I pissed them off and I actually showed them who was boss. They were being assholes, so I think they needed a little toning up. I saw a lot of women's stuff, and typically when you see women's stuff, Good chance there's jewelry in there. I mean, if there's some few pieces of gold, that may become, bring five, six, seven hundred bucks and essentially pay for the unit so the rest of the stuff becomes almost free. We're gonna pop the lock and see what we got inside. <laughs> certain neighborhoods are known for certain things. You can find a great unit anywhere, but there are certain patterns, stuff that needs research. You'll get a painting that you think's not worth a lot, but you run it by your appraiser and he tells you it's 10,000. You know, it may look like junk, but somebody's gonna love this. If you're on East Point, you're gonna get junk. If you're in uh, Roswell, you get a lot of nice stuff because that's another high income area. Oh shit, it's carbine, a bayonet. This looks like to be from World War One. Damn, it's about, $250, $300. As you start buying units, you'll get something, you don't know what it is, then you'll go online and you'll look it up. It's like, oh, and after you do that a few thousand times, you just begin to know this may be an imperial piece or this may be an empire chest. You can go online and get a good feel for what the price is. Generally, as I'm pulling stuff out, I'm calculating if I'm making or losing money. And so far, I'm well ahead of the curve. This is what I call drill bits, those little diamond chips. For this thing, the real draw is the gold. This is something you would get at the flea market or one of those stores, kiosk in the mall. It's pretty cheap. Just the gold may get you 150 bucks. So I could take it to my gold guy, get a 1500 in a matter of five minutes. 
there's a really huge resource network that I've created for myself. Anything that comes out of a unit of value, I don't care if it's just a gold coin that I can scrap out to my gold guy, or say it's a high-grade antique. In Atlanta, it's really common to get a lot of Coca-Cola collectibles, artifacts, because you have so many people around here that used to work for the company, know someone that worked for the company, or their parents worked for the company. This is nice. I had that friend look at this because it looks mass-produced to me, but I may be wrong. The last time I had one of these, it was a primitive jug. A friend of mine ran it through the auction and got 150 bucks for it because it was signed by this guy that only made maybe 50 jugs, and everybody loved his work. It just kept getting better and better and better. It was really a mix of their business and personal stuff, so it was a great unit. This is a Martin. These things go anywhere from $1,000 up to maybe 15 grand, depending on when it was made, where it was made, and who made it. I'm definitely gonna make north of 7,000. And if I took a little time to sell it, we're in the 10 to 12,000 range. And going back to the, gu the guitar, depending on what that is, even more. Hey, we're up in Lavanya, Georgia. I'm up here to see my buddy Sonia. I got a few items I'm not sure on. And also, some things sell better up here than downtown Atlanta. Hey, Sonia. Got my little wagon. I've known Glendon for about eight years now. I trust him. I've always trusted him. I've had no problem with him. We've been very honest and upfront with each other. He's a good man, a good person. It's not a radio flyer. I'm saying the 50s. 50s or the 60s? Yeah. We've got to clean it up a little. It's probably worth about $50 there. This is a primitive jug. Because I saw the little felt things on there, they must have put them They just put that on there okay. to keep from scratching. Sonia's been doing this way longer than I have. How can you tell it's primitive versus commercial? This is Georgia clay right here. This might even have come from Gillsville at one of the potteries, maybe Hills okay. or Cravens or, you know, someplace in North Georgia. If I put it in my store, I'd probably put it about $200. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That'll work, okay, because I was going to think 30 or 40. There's another guy we both know named Larry. You know, he's a part-time treasure hunter type guy. Hey, Larry. What's hey, man, on? what's up, buddy? And he's passionate about musical instruments. Looks like a jumbo 28D Martin is what it is. Okay. Late 40s, early 50s. Okay. I mean, this guitar's been probably laying up, and it, it sounds true. It's still in tune. There's no telling how long, how long was, they say the unit was sitting there. I have no idea. No there was idea. no pollen in the unit, so it probably wasn't that long. Now, I was thinking okay. maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred. No, you're way off. Way off, five hundred, um, six hundred. If it's in the forties, anywhere from ten to fifteen. Excuse thousand. me. If it's in the fifties, uh, five to ten. You can tell. I only every paid nine fifty for the unit. It's a beautiful guitar. It's been picked a lot. You can tell because right. he put a new guard on it. You can tell this guy picked it. He even picked it clean down in here. We're a nation of pack rats. You got people buying stuff they don't need, hoarding stuff that they should throw away, keeping clothes they can no longer wear. And when they run out of room in their house, they put it in the storage unit. And after so many months, it's just not worth it anymore. They stop paying and it goes up for auction. As uh, my business improved, I gained the capital that pretty much if I wanted it, there was no one that could stop me from getting it. You know, this is business. You know, big money takes little money.